Hello. Uh, thanks for joining the, the presentation. Um, I'm Redon. I come from. A, um, oops, I come from uh, Albania in a city called El Basan, which is quite in the center of, uh, like close to Tirana. It's quite a simple city, very small, and doesn't have much. And now I live uh, in Tirana, which is the capital of Albania. Uh, although I travel a lot for you know, different events, conferences, and stuff like that. If you want to, um, one of the things that my birth city has is quite important is that it has a lot of uh, good food. Uh, and it's Mediterranean, so, but it's not very healthy, so you should not consume it uh, for a big period of time. Okay, so I, I started uh, with other people, with other folks, the Open Labs Hackerspace in Tirana in 2012. Uh, I'm one of the initial members, and I do a lot of contributions in uh, Wikimedia, OpenStreetMap, uh, LibreOffice, and of course, uh, OpenSUSE, mainly in localizations, and also doing some events at the local hackerspace. Um, one, two of the events that we organize there, that I'm part of, uh, I've been part of since day one, are, is the crypto party, when people that do not know a lot of technical stuff about how to be safe online and how to communicate in a very encrypted way. Um, it's been running for two years now. This is going to be the third year, and it's quite, uh, it's quite inspiring to see people that were technophobic first uh, talk about encryption in the end of the uh, event. Um, it, uh, the event started with uh, Arjen Kampuis, one of the uh, people of the Dutch community, Hack42, and other initiatives. And I'll, also I'm part of the OSCAL conference, which was a week before. And uh, it actually gathers all the initiatives in Albania that are related to open source, uh, free software, uh, privacy online, open data, and stuff like that. Um, I'm also, uh, this is like I'm also mentioning my company because it's related heavily with the uh, element of uh, advocacy and why we do this. Uh, it's not the company itself, but it's the ecosystem behind it. Uh, it's called Collective 68, and we offer... Uh, cloud services for people that do not know or do not want to manage open source instances, just like Nextcloud, which is the talk next, uh, Attendize, Mattermost, and stuff like that. Okay, so um, I, I, I'm kind of sad because usually when I was going to this kind of events, a lot of people were talking about like Linux, the, the importance of advocacy, and now it's a lot about the industry, which is nice. Money is good, and uh, we should pay the rent as well in the end of the month. Uh, but also, advocacy in our industry or in our area is also related uh, not only to the, to, to the doing good, but also to companies as well, right? So every company needs to have whatever it is. It's a tech company, it's agriculture, whatever it is. It needs to talk about why it's good what they're doing. So if you go to Merriam-Webster, it says the definition of advocacy is the act of process of supporting a cause or proposal, the act or process of advo uh, advocating, which is obvious, we know this, right? And um, in our communities and businesses and institutions, for people that are into institutions, um, our focus is free and open source technologies in general, all their privacy. Uh, and open data, and, and, and public domain in, in uh, a lot of cases. So advocacy in general, and we now know uh, advocacy for, for our industry. And what does it matter? Uh, I mentioned before, it matters because in any environment, including the free and open source movement, uh, there are many actors. There are enthusiasts or people that just like it for, because they think it's the right thing to do. There are people that have companies. Uh, there are public institutions that um, need to know. There are so many, so many institutions that do not know the things that we are doing and the way we are doing it, right? Um, and in the end of the day, we are part of the same, in one way or the other, we get connected because we are part of the same, you know, bucket of stuff that happened inside it. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are all part of an ecosystem. Uh, it's... It's in, really, it's in our best interest to have as many people that are, have this mentality as possible. Um, and because the more people, the more easier our life would be, 
the more uh, better it will be for communities and more open source and free software we're going to have. Uh, and whatever goals we have at an individual or collective or, or company level, more people that talk about what we do, it's better for everyone. Again, we tend to forget this uh, because we are busy and because the industry has gone so far. Like we heard about Microsoft that bought GitHub for, I don't know, how, much, how many um, millions or trillions? I don't know how much was it? Billions of dollars? Um, and it's, it's going big, like, um, uh, like the value of open source products now, it's quite big. And uh, this is very nice, but we are, again, we need to talk about the basics once in a, once in a while. And talking about you know, advocacy and ethics in general, it's not very pleasant, especially in the morning or in a sunny day. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, again, it's good for, for everyone, every, everyone's business. So some, there are some people that have done this before. Um, I think in people that do full-time advocacy usually are uh, some of them, you know, do get burned out because you need to sacrifice a lot, a lot of your your personal time, a lot of your personal uh, family time, and stuff like that. So you need to be a very tough character to do it. But also, they give an example to other people to do smaller things, maybe. But they have also that they also have have an impact on uh, what uh, what we all are doing. They are good, I think. We should also, some people think these examples are good, some people think they are bad. It depends on our point of view or how we see those. So Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikimedia Foundation, I think it's a good, uh, good uh, case of advocacy uh, in general. There, I don't know many people that you know, say he's done some bad things, although I think he's now uh, not that much into the uh, Wikimedia movement as he was before. Uh, also a good example of probably he got burned out. I don't know. I don't know him much. Um, but I think he's a good example in the end of the day of doing something with passion for a lot of time and having quite an impact. Richard Stallman. Um, mm, <laughs> so very, very good advocacy guy I th in, my in my perception. Um, somebody, uh, my friend over there, told me that he's going to be in an event. So I'm only, you know, imagining how, you know, handling him and, uh, you know, going around with him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But a very good advocacy person. Um, you know, it's it's very rare to see people that started doing this like 30 years ago and still doing it, which means commission. Uh, they are committed uh, to their cause. Uh, but again, with talent, come, <laughs> there, there, are some, there is also some back uh, package with it. Uh, okay, Edward Snowden. Uh, in, in general, we should, I think we should judge people after a while, uh, but there is a general, except if you are working in, in the US administration, in some parts of it, you're probably going to think he's not a good, good advocacy guy, a guy in privacy, but I think the majority of the people that are not only us, but other people think uh, that it's, it's a very good case of advocacy with a lot of personal cost. Uh, and also, uh, it was, I think the impact that it, it, it had in a very short period of time, it was huge. You could have people that had no idea about you know, privacy and talking about you know, uh, massive surveillance and stuff like that. You had ma uh, ma many popular uh, magazines talking about these things as well because of him. Linux Torvalds, uh, there is something going on with the <laughs> Linux things. Uh, very, I think very good advocacy guy, uh, but again, it, it's one of these cases that when you, it depends when you, uh, who you ask, and uh, if they're bothered from uh, you know, bad language and stuff like that, or you know, showing fingers uh, in public. Uh, but again, uh, I think it, he has quite a good impact on, on the Linux scene and uh, uh, free and open source. Uh, movement as well. So where we can, where we can advocate, I think it's simple. There are like students are the best in my in my perception from from my experience in my city, the city where I'm based right now. Students are the best case uh, scenario. Although in countries like Albania, a lot of we have this brain drain. A lot of people leave the country, so they get exposed to the whole culture and they leave the country. Hopefully, they're going to come back. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, but it, in general, students are, because they have not been contaminated yet by this whole, you know, um, life achievement, midlife crisis, all the, all the, you know, having a mortgage and all this stuff that people have these days. Um, universities are a tough thing to advocate because are a very, it depends also on, on each country. Again, I'm talking out of my personal experience. Um, is this on the record? It, it is? We are recording this? Okay. I cannot talk more about the, you know, people on, on uh, Albanian universities on the record. Uh, but in general, it's not easy to advocate there. Uh, it's very complicated, very bureaucratic, but we need to do it. Uh, home users, um, again, it's very small scale. Usually it's your aunt um, which is going to bother with all this stuff, and it, I don't know if it's a good case scenario, but there are also people that are into it. For example, I have my, uh, my family members uh, that you now use Linux, uh, and they're not because of my advocacy, but because it's easier for, for them to use it. Uh, Another tough one, but again, it depends on the government or where you're talking, um, are the public institutions. And um, in, uh, in Albania, we've, done, we've managed to do through a lot, of, um, you know, a lot of meetings and a lot of talks and also events where we invite a lot of letters sent to the public institutions. We, uh, we've managed along with the respective organizations to, to switch, to, to convince the municipality of Tirana to switch from a proprietary software to Nextcloud. They are also using in 85% of the computers. There are LibreOffice right now, uh, and also they have the Moodle, which is something about an open source. I've never used it. It's open source software uh, about trainings, um, and there are, there are, there are talks for them to switch to Linux uh, gradually at some point. So it, it's a very good case study, and uh, in, if you want to do. Advocacy there, again, in my experience, you just need to, need to, to go institutionally first. Probably going to take a, a while. And after that, if it doesn't work, you need to talk to key people that are in the institution uh, in order to convince them um, and explain them why they should switch from one system to the other. And of course, I'm more happy to, to talk over coffee after if there is any other place that I forgot where we can advocate. So where to do it? How much time do we have? Okay. Are you Germans? We c can we take this longer? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So where to do it? There are two levels, uh, stereotypes. So there are two levels: micro and micro. Uh, micro usually means international, but not always. And micro, it's the local level, uh, which I personally like uh, more and a lot. So let's go first. Micro. Uh, usually, all the uh, Linux or free software advocacy groups, usually they um, go to one place, which is the European Parliament. They have a lot of meetings. It costs a lot. Uh, and uh, usually, it's, uh, you are against people that have a lot of budgets uh, to lobby, right? Um, uh, but there are some organizations, Free Software Foundation is one of them, and I'm pretty sure EDRE, uh, E-D-R-E, is another one, which are focused in changing policies at the European Union level. Um, in, uh, in Albania and Tirana, we also run this campaign, Public Money, Public Code, where we try to contact um, public officials to explain to them uh, officially wh why this is important for, to, for public institutions to have in, uh, infrastructure, open source infrastructure, because it should be, and it's the right way to do it. Uh, Controversial, the Linux Foundation also it's a group that aims to um, do uh, advocacy at a macro level, so industry-wide. Um, and uh, again, there are people I know that they are very, quite positive about it, other people are not. But in general, they are, are, they are, the general idea is that they want to have an impact uh, and uh, have advocacy at a macro level. And of course, it's very important to have our own media. Um, for example, I, I read... Uh, this blog, it's called It's FOSS, it has news and updates about free and open source software in general, but there are also other blogs and, and news in technology that are quite, um, uh, quite representing and doing a lot of good advocacy in, at, in an international level as well. Um, 
Of course, at conferences, uh, just like in companies, are a good uh, way to go and talk. Um, and it, it, we also need to do a lot of, you know, in order to support local events or local events like this, we also need to do advocacy to big companies that have an interest in supporting conferences, uh, open source and free software companies like this one. Uh, again, there are also some uh, great initiatives uh, that help young people also, or yeah, people that have just started uh, in this industry understand uh, why it's quite important. We just uh, uh, launched a microsite called What Can I Do for LibreOffice, which is a fork of um, What Can I Do for Mozilla, which is a fork of What Can I Do for Fedora. And uh, this is another one. And it's, it's a nice case study, I think, of you know, uh, people sharing code and also uh, helping peop other people, uh, you know, get into uh, our movement. Uh, this helps people with some simple questions understand uh, how they can get involved in LibreOffice, for example, or in other initiatives as well. This is the Italian version. There is also, um, in, it's also in English and other languages. Okay, so my, uh, micro level because we have only a few minutes left. Okay, so it, I mentioned before Open Labs Hackerspace. It's, uh, it's the local initiatives. Uh, hackerspaces, there are some good ones. I think I would totally, uh, totally hang out and see. And it's, uh, there, these are very good hubs of people meeting each other and talking about this kind of, st this kind of stuff. In Tirana has helped a lot. Local conference, uh, conferences are, uh, have also this kind of spirit of you know, having a, a community and people care for each other a lot. Uh, usually there are no a few companies there sponsoring them, so I, th I think if you want them to, to keep on, we need to, um, to support these kind of initiatives, either with, our, with, you know, if we are into a company and sponsoring them, but also if we talk to these events, uh, you have no idea how much inspiration uh, youngsters in these uh, uh, local events get out of these uh, conferences. So as I'm, oops. So as I, men I mentioned, organize events and conferences at a, a local level, smaller events, hackathons or meetups, even for three or four people uh, are quite nice. Um, and very important, if, uh, in invite influential people that might need to be advocated in what we're doing. We, uh, every year in our conference, we send a lot of letters to any kind of public institution. Uh, sometimes they come, sometimes they don't, but they are a reminder that we are out there and what we're doing doesn't cost anything to send letters to these people. You just change the name, you know, and the name of the institution and, and you just post them. Uh, well, if it's Albanian post, it usually goes, <laughs> it's not very good. So some letters might get lost, which was our experience. But that's another talk we can have over uh, beer or coffee. Okay, and this is an outcome uh, we had. I mentioned that we had an agreement with the municipality to do a lot of uh, open source stuff. Um, and these are, these are five very confused people that haven't done this before, as you can see, do not know how to dress officially. And this is the mayor of Tirana signing the agreement, which is a very good outcome of, uh, you know, inviting these people to our events, letting them know what we're doing. A lot of meetings. Um, we are a Mediterranean country, which means that there's, you, can, you have to do stuff in the coffee shop, otherwise nothing gets done, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't know if you saw, have seen the Shawshank Redemption, Redemption when the guy wanted to have a library in the prison. Uh, this is not a spoiler alert for, for people that haven't seen it, but in general, people in public institutions are very, um, they have their own agenda, so if they don't answer, we just brought them again and again and again until they got bored and say, who are these guys? Let's have a meeting over coffee, okay? And uh, really important to understand what's their incentive um, and what they want, in what they are, usually these people need something. In this case, uh, it's very good publicity for the municipality of Tirana, so we go to every conference and we, like we mention them, uh, so also they go to different events and say, hey, we did this, this and that. So it's a win-win situation for all the involved parties, right? So some last thoughts. Um, there is, last slide, there is a promise. There is the last, uh, if, you, if, we, if you do a little research about whatever we, each of you are up to, um, you're gonna see that there is quite, there are gonna be a lot of active communities in some countries and none in other countries. 
Uh, and the potential there is like quite big. Um, for example, I don't know, um, you know, Africa, probably for logistical uh, issues, because it's very hard to go there, doesn't have a lot of uh, free and open source enthusiasts right now. But the potential there is huge. Uh, some Asian countries, um, you know, there are, there are uh, countries where if you go and visit them, they're going to have so much, you're going to see so much potential. And even if you, like, we start talking, like, online, it's going to be also very good. Uh, it's very important to think long term. I know it's tough. Uh, I mentioned, you know, mortgage, we are busy, we have families. Um, but if we don't think long term, it, nothing is going to work, uh, in, in my perception. Uh, start a community in a coffee shop, in a hackerspace, in cities that there do not have anything. Even if there are five people, I think the potential there is huge. I've seen this happen six years ago, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's quite important to, to talk to local, small communities, small cities about this. Um, and some airport books, read some airport books like The Tower of Coaching, um, which is about business, but in general also applies to communities as well. And uh, last but not least, agree on some main values of the community you are, you are starting from day one. Uh, values, I think, are more important than having budgets or you know, having uh, sponsors for a conference or event or anything else like that. Because it's going to uh, spare you a lot of time fighting, um, if you have one pillar and say, hey, we agree to do only this and uh, we will not uh, diversify, uh, I think it makes the life easier for everyone that is involved in this kind of communities. And um, yeah, that's it. It's, it's a tough process. Advocacy, it's, you know, you need to do it on your spare time. That's why there's a lot of money in lobbying in the US. Google spends a lot of money. Google started three years ago, I think, uh, one division in home, like not outsourcing it only for lobbying in the EU, which means that it's very, very important. And uh, we just need to do the same with zero budget or less budget um, in, uh, in, at different levels, because again, it's very good for each one of us, for our companies, for our institutions, and for you know, our communities. So thanks a lot. If there are any questions or if we have time for questions. No? Okay, we're going to be around, so if you have any...